What's going on everybody? So I just got back from Cali and I've got a big old box that I gotta take apart. Yes, there is a laser inside of it. So I'm gonna throw together some tips and tricks just to show you how to get this crate apart and get your laser out. Uh, and then I'll give you kind of a, a blow by blow of the machine that I got. So stay tuned. So tip number one, as you can see, I got this crate rolling. Um, I actually brought it back on a trailer and unloaded it, me and one other person. And this is a big crate and it's probably around 300 plus pounds. I was able to use a little bit of leverage and get this up onto two furniture dollies that I got from like Home Depot, Lowe's, Harbor Freight, whatever. So two furniture dollies, one on that side, right underneath the edge, one on this side, right underneath the edge. That way I could get it off the trailer and I could get it in my garage. As you can see now, pull it out so I can get around the crate and uh, get it to a good position so we can actually get this thing undone. So here's a closer look. You can see there's a furniture dolly there. And around to this other side, there's a furniture dolly there. And that's all that I have that is moving this crate around um, so that way I can position it right. And I'll use a block here in a second. I'll lift it, I'll pull these out, and then I'll get working on undoing the crate. So I know you just got this big old crate that showed up at your house and you're super excited and your primal instincts are kicking in and this is what you want to jump to. Stop. There is an easier way. And I'll show you. So once you take a close look at the crate, all the way around the bottom, there are these screws. And if you take all those screws out, all the way around, this whole thing will just lift right off. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start taking all these screws out, and then I'm gonna get an extra set of hands, and we'll just lift it off, and it'll be beautiful. Okay, so I got my 10 millimeter, no, this one is an eight millimeter socket, and we're gonna go to town. Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. I've gone around, I took all the screws out, out around it, and I checked just to make sure that everything was loose, and I got an extra set of hands, and we are just gonna lift this off and show this laser beauty underneath. Two, three. So one of the last things that I need to do before we get this off the pallet is just remove the screw screws that are in the feet of this on all four feet. So we'll go ahead and get those out. Now that those are out, you can actually go and adjust the feet so that way they are off of the bed and it's rolling on the wheels that way you can try and get it off um, there is a nut on here that you can use a wrench and actually go and adjust those feet uh, as you go righty tighty they should go up into the base lefty loosey they'll go down and out So everyone's laser should be coming with one of these sheets 
Mine looks like it's held on by a magnet. But I can't seem to get off. It's just on there. Got it. And so this is the sheet that goes over what your model is and everything that has been quality assured, quality tested. Keep this so that way if you do have any issues, you can use this and go back to OM Tech and share it with them so that way that they know that things were, were checked but they may not be coming back correct. So I'm gonna do a once over around the outside of the machine. This thing is a beast. So this is the 100 watt, 24 by 40 OM Tech machine. And it is big. So as I peeled off the kind of protective plastic, some of the stuff got stuck on here, but it all seems to be coming off just fine. I'll get uh, some like goo gone or something and, and I'll clean this off better, but it will come off. No big deal. It looks like it's just kind of where they uh, um, warm it up to bend this acrylic into what is the lid. But here we go. Open it up. Nice and pretty. So you'll see a lot of the this stuff has been zip tied just to keep things secure in transit so it's not moving anywhere. You know, covers, everything. Um, this is the blue bucket that comes with the machine for water. Um, if you are planning to use the, the pump system that comes with it, I recommend getting a Home Depot bucket because then you can at least have a lid on it and drill those holes and run your lines in that way. So on this machine, uh, here is the little test gauge that they did or the test file that they did and the gauge that they sent with it. Um, this should be the height that you need for the correct focal length. Um, that's one thing that I will check. I, I, don't, I don't trust it. I trust but verify is what I like to say. But on this, this is all attached to the laser head. It has the keys that actually go into the switch that is right about there for the laser. So you want to hold on to this stuff. So you can see that I just took out the honeycomb bed. Uh, I gotta get it unwrapped and then put it back in. A lot of these new units that are coming are the square blue and gray machines. They're coming with this big um, funnel that's in here or like kind of, it's a, they basically call it a catch tray. So it makes all your pieces fall into this tray and there's a tray that you can pull out. The one negative side of it is that this big thing underneath makes it so your travel under the machine is limited. So I don't know how much I like this. Um, in my setup, I may end up just taking that whole thing out and just let the pieces fall to the bottom of the bed and clean it out that way. That's how my old machine is. And, and I may end up, uh, you can see there's just kind of some tack welds around the edge there. I may end up just taking this whole bottom tray out. So going around looking at you know everything, comparing it to how my old machine was, like I really like this. Before there was like a, a weird triangle key that you had to have and you didn't want to lose it. But this, these little handles make it really nice. That's the front hatch. Close that. Then we go to the right side of the machine. You can see there's a, a hatch here that lets you get to the, the functional moving parts over on this side. And then even down here, you're able to open this hatch. And here you can get into, uh, oh, there we go. 
uh, a lot of the electronics. So this is your your driver electronics, um, the power supplies. I believe this is the power supply that is all for this side. And then there is a power supply on the other side that's specifically for the tube. Um, and in this unit, you can see that the air pump is actually right here. So that's gonna be something that I'm gonna change because I have an upgraded air assist already for my other machine. So I'll hook this machine into it as well. So I'll go ahead and close this one up. Okay, so then coming around to the back hatch. So here is where the exhaust comes out. Um, again, this is probably something that I'm going to upgrade. I have a nice, a nice inline exhaust fan that I'll use for this, but same thing. Got these nice little hatches, or nice little latches, and it comes down. And you're able to open it up. So you can see there is the Z driver motor, and then you've got your exhaust fan. It's hooked up to the bottom of that tray. So you can kind of see how that is right there. And then this basically pumps the smoke straight out of that tray. So close that one up. Um, and then here is the rear part of the pass-through. So it's kind of hard to open this part one-handed, but there we go. So you can see it would ride right across the bed and you'd be able to use the pass-through. Um, this one looks like maybe it's a little bit narrower than what my old one was, but there's about two inches there. Um, so really not much more that you're gonna wanna stick through this pass-through than, than that. But that's that hatch. Um, then here, open these little levers. And back here is where you actually have your laser tube. So you can see how it kind of stretches into those corners back there. And then there's actually a, a cover that's on that mirror over there that I'll have to take off. But this is where the laser tube lives. Um, over here on this right side of the back has your water inlet and your water outlet. So when you get your pump and everything set up, your bucket or your chiller, however you're gonna do that, the water that is coming out of the bucket goes into the inlet of the machine and then out of the machine and dumps into the bucket. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> then over here on the left side of the machine, again, similar window. So you can get to all of the moving parts over here. And then on this side, you've got your power supply for the laser. And so that this is your, your beefy power. So you can see it's got a special little connector that runs up to the tube. And then this is also where you'll see the um, water flow sensors, flow switch. Um, so if you're having issues with water flow and for some reason the machine won't uh, fire because of that, that's where this sensor is right there. Um, but other than that, that, that pretty much is the, the 360 of the machine. Um, on this specific machine, it has a little amp meter up here on the top. Other machines actually have amp meters on the, the power supplies themselves. Um, but that's kind of the rundown of the machine from where we're at right now. So in a little bit, I'm going to get it off the crate. Um, I have a little bit of rearranging to do in my shop for its new home, but that is the laser in and of itself. And over here, uh, from the back of the machine on the left-hand side is where you have, um, your power cords on this machine. There are two, uh, 110 inputs that are driving the different power supplies because they're on different sides of the machine. These, I don't recommend mo using. Um, they've been notorious for being just a little bit problematic. So I, I tend to stay away from those and I, I will just hook everything else up to a, a power strip uh, that is separate from this. Okay, so take a look at the blue bucket that came in the machine. 
Um, it also has a lot of the, the parts that you need. This is gonna be a lot of your tubing that is gonna connect for your water lines in and out. Um, this is gonna be ducting for the back of machine, so that way you can run it from the back out to wherever your end point is, whether it's a, a vent out of the house or out of the garage or shop or whatever you wanna call it. Um, this is gonna be the water pump that comes with the machine. You can totally use this as your, your water supply and your water system. You leave this pump in the bucket, fill it up with distilled water, hook up the lines to the top of this for the inlet on the machine, um, and then run that into the machine, and then you just dump the other one back into the bucket. Uh, like I said, I recommend a Home Depot bucket, so that way you can keep dust out. But that's right there. This is a grounding wire. Uh, if you wanted to ground it, in the US, we have some pretty stable uh, electric, so you don't really have to, but you can go ahead, tie that in here, and then ground it to, say, a grounding stake, or ground it to one of your receptacles that you have in your house. This is another uh, hose clamp that you can use for this ducting right here. And then you have your magic blue bag of stuff. So in this blue bag, you're gonna have your instruction manual, you're gonna have cables, so that way you can get everything hooked up to your machine. You're gonna have some tape in case you need it for electronics. They also come with a set of Allen keys. This is, I believe, some, yeah, some of the slow drying silicone where my machine already came with the tube installed. I'm not gonna worry about this. That's just gonna stay there for a rainy day. Um, here is a USB cable, and then the thumb drive that has RD Works on it. I don't use RD Works, I use Lightburn, so I won't need that, but I will need the USB cable. Here are my power cords. Here's one, here's two. And then the last thing in here is the manual. Um, as far as setup goes, it does have some of the information. I feel like it is a little bit lacking as far as um, the, the setup side of things. The, it does have some information on the controller and different things. So it's worth keeping around so that way you have it and you know what the buttons do and being able to reference some of it. Um, but. You know, I'm continually trying to make YouTube videos that are going to help make this process a little bit easier. But that's what comes in the bucket. That's what comes in the bag. Um, so that way you're you're kind of aware of what to expect. Uh, but here we go. You know, I've taken my e-stop off, so I know that it's ready to go. And then I'm going to hit my control switch. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind, with these newer machines that have the new doors, that have the different sensors, it's gonna scream at you until you shut the door. Make sure that you're aware of that, um, and there are ways to disable these. Not recommended. They are safety features for a reason. Not recommended. I'm going to do it, but not recommended. Um, so, full disclaimer, you can do it. I'm going to do it, but as far as the safety feature, it's there for a reason. So unless you know what you're doing and you're confident in it and you're willing to take that risk on your side, don't do it.